Hey guys and welcome back to Warframe. Today I want to talk to you guys about why I play Warframe and why I've put so many hours into this game. And the main reason for that, other than the fact that this game is completely free, all the content is free, all the updates are free, is the variety, uh, the depth and the customization of this game. It has more than any other game that I have ever played, more than any game I've ever seen, and that's what just keeps bringing me back. The content is regularly update, updated and there's always something for you to do. And I'm just going to showcase some of the stuff that's in Warframe, uh, the weapons and the Warframes. And we're going to start with the Warframes. Warframe is an MMO light style game where each of the different frames kind of has an MMO class feel to it, whether you want to play stealthy or DPS, be a tank, uh, and each of them kind of has their own theme, whether it's being a swordsman or ice or uh, mind control or music even and there is a frame to suit almost any style of play the same goes for the weapons uh, Warframe has an immense arsenal whether you want beam weapons, shotguns, bows uh, grenade launchers, cannons anything you could think of there's probably a weapon for it whether it's a primary or a secondary and they are all customizable whether you want to upgrade the way they look or the way that they perform it's all up to you the player you choose how you want to play what you want to play with and there's no wrong answer almost every weapon every frame uh, is completely viable for the content in this game Warframe also has companions whether it's the mechanical companions you just saw or one of the Kubros or Kavats that you can breed and get different fur patterns and sizes and types. Uh, more customization there. And when I said that you could customize your weapons in your Warframe to play a certain way, you use this mod system for that. Whether you want to build a crit weapon or a status weapon or go pure damage, whether you want your frames to be more tanky or do more damage or have an extended duration or more range on their abilities, all of it is customizable. And there is no wrong answer to it. You can play however you want. Now Warframe is free and the way that you obtain the different Warframes and the weapons is by crafting them. By finding the parts out in the world. By defeating certain bosses that drop those parts and coming to the foundry where when you have the right amount of resources to build that item you can craft it and then claim it in a few hours or uh, for Warframes it's three days. You can build almost every weapon in the game, every frame, all the arc wings. They even have a system where you can build your own melee weapon from the ground up with different grips and blades to fit your style. And I just love that about this game. The, the in-depth customization that you have. Warframe also has a faction system. Uh, and the more standing that you earn with a faction by doing missions for them or repping their sigil on your Warframe, uh, the more uh, rewards you can get from them, whether it's augments for your Warframe to change their abilities up or get faction specific weapons. It's up to you. Uh, but be warned that the more you help certain factions, uh, the more you annoy the other factions and they'll send hit squads after you. There is a PvP called Conclave. It's not very popular, but there is enough people that you always find a game. Warframe is primarily a PvE game and that's where you're gonna find most of the players that's where you're gonna find uh, most of like people talking about it or trying to get to the end game and this is the map for Warframe it's called the star chart and every one of these planets has a different tile set that is randomly generated to create the mission that you're gonna be playing on and each planet has a multitude of different mission types that you can do whether it's capturing uh, a high value target or defending an objective just exterminating everyone or trying to break in to special caches in a spy mission there is just an incredible amount of uh, different play styles uh, different modes that you can do there's even a large open world mode that you can play in and they're currently in the works for another one that is I believe almost ten times bigger than the Plains of Eidolon there are special events that go on almost every week uh, quests that you can do to get Warframes or to progress in the story and just so much more in this game 
every planet has a different faction, whether it's the Corpus, the tech-loving Corpus, or the Grenier, who are clones, uh, just bred for war, or the Infested, which are this diseased kind of... Uh, they take It's an infection that takes over the different factions and converts them uh, into themselves. And now you did see when I was kind of going through the weapons in the Warframes that there was a premium currency uh, to buy them. And you can buy this premium currency with your own cash, but Warframe also has an in-game market uh, that's all run by the players, uh, and people sell the stuff that they farm for, or people buy stuff that they don't want to farm for, or that they just can't find. So if you put in the work, you'll never have to buy platinum on your own. Just go out, farm for new weapons that have just been released, and sell them uh, for platinum. And you can get a lot of platinum from this, whether it's 10 to 15 for uh, some pretty common mods, or you can find rivens or primed weapons that go for a lot. 800 platinum for some of the more popular rivens. Warframe also has clans that you can join up and team up with other people. It's it's just incredible, and I'm going to show you guys some of the gameplay and the different types. Alright, this is a capture mission where I'll be targeting a high-valued individual, taking him down, and bringing him back. And I decided to bring Ash along with me, and Ash is the ninja character, him and uh, Loki. But Ash is a little more combat-focused, so I didn't upgrade his stealth in this mission, uh, just his his power with his damage, wherein he throws his shurikens or he backstabs. Uh, but I did bring a bow in case I needed to do some silent takedowns like I just did here with the boss. And one of the things that I love about the gameplay of this is you can take any frame into any mission and do that mission. Uh, you don't need to take a stealthy frame in to do a spy. You could take a tank in and do it if you wanted to. You could take a uh, Let's take Ash. You could play a stealthy uh, character for, like this, a takedown or an exterminate if you wanted to just kill everyone. It's all up to the player. That's why it's kind of an MMO light. You're not forced into these, these roles. You, each class feels like it has a role, but you're not limited to it. And the game is very fluid between the sliding around, the bullet jumping, uh, the somersaults. You can use most of your abilities, you fire your weapons, change weapons, reload, all while doing these parkour maneuvers, and it's an incredible feeling to run around and play that way. It's just so smooth, and you feel like a badass shredding through your enemies when they can't touch you when you're flying through the air. Now that was a more kind of combat-focused one, uh, but this is another mode, and... I decided to take Frost with me, and this mode is a defensive mode. This is take a special uh, hacking device, plug it into a terminal, and defend that terminal from the enemies that are going to come and try and stop you. And Frost is a very defensive frame. He can create a bubble uh, that can't be shot through, and it kind of has a certain amount of HP that you can choose to upgrade if you want. And he's really good for these kind of missions, but you're not limited to bringing him. You could, I could have brought Ash for this mission, and he would have worked out just fine here, though the terminal might be at risk. And that was Ash's bubble. I've also decided to bring a precision rifle with me, as I can hide inside my bubble and fire out, um, which is really nice. However, you can't fire into the bubble, which uh, does cause a bit of a problem every once in a while. Now, Frost has a few other abilities. If you, say, don't want to play a totally defensive Frost, he has an ice spike that he can throw out. He has an avalanche ability that turns everyone in the area to ice and shatters them, uh, which is a great feeling. He can have really good clears on the enemies. He can create these waves of ice to take out the enemies in front of him. But it's all up to you, the player, how you want to play. How do you want to build him? Do you want to build him as a support player who can, heck, take his avalanche ability that you saw freeze everyone there and uh, killed most of them? It's because I have a fair chunk of power strength on this character. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just want a really high range and you just want to freeze them and have them frozen as a crowd control ability. You can do that. You're not limited to just playing as 
someone who puts down a bubble and then uses their avalanche is kind of the way to kill. And the melee combat in this game is great, whether you're running around with this massive sword, the galatine, or bringing a whip or a dagger like Ash was using. It's just all great to use and it feels powerful. You feel good playing this game. Uh, that's not to say that there isn't ever uh, the threat of dying in the game. Uh, that definitely happens at the later levels. And when you're first starting out, you're going to run into those problems too. But it's not that big of a problem. Uh, you'll learn to adapt and learn how to beat the certain uh, different types of enemies in the different factions. And you'll learn what they're weak against, whether it's corrosive damage or magnetic damage. Uh, it's... Warframe's all about... Uh, it's very complex and very in-depth, and it rewards the players that like that style of play. Not everyone is going to like the amount of content that is in this game. They're going to find it overwhelming or too difficult to understand. Warframe does not hold your hand. The tutorials are very bare, and they leave it up to you, the player, to figure it out. And one of the really creative ways that they do that is they have... Uh, certain players in game called the Guides of the Lotus that can help new players out, teach them uh, how to play, kind of like the Sherpas were in Destiny, uh, how they helped new players. Warframe's community is amazing. There are some toxic people, but for the majority, everyone is helpful. If you're a new player and you need help, maybe you can't complete that exterminate mission against the Corpus faction because you can't deal with their shields and the offsprays. Just go to the recruitment chat and ask, and you'll have plenty of responses in no time at all willing to help. And that's just another one of the reasons why I love this game. The community is amazing for that. Every, you could say you're new and you need help getting mods and the people who have been playing for a long time probably have stockpiles of those mods that they'd just be happy to give to you and help you out because the more people we have just the better this game gets and it helps the economy of Warframe grow it helps um, uh, like support the game and it just it's great to have that tight knit community of players ready to help each other and it's just a great thing to have as a new player. You never feel isolated, like you don't have anyone to play with. All you have to do is ask, and you'll have friends ready to play with you. The last thing I want to show off to you guys is the Plains of Eidolon. And this is it. It is massive. And I've brought Zephyr with me, who is the Burb Warframe. She can fly around, uh, which is great for the Plains of Eidolon, which is absolutely massive and there are tons of things to do in here though some people find it a little bare a little grindy you can farm fish mine ore, collect specific plants and resources to build weapons or new frames there are quests that pop up periodically there are these encampments full of uh, grenier soldiers uh, whether they're in the middle of mining out the ground and trying to find ores or uh, just creating bases. Uh, there's You can hunt Eidolons, which are these massive monsters that require, most of the time require teams to take down. And they come out at night and you can hunt them and they're kind of the end game of Warframe. Uh, but yeah, the planes are great and soon we're going to have Fortuna, which is uh, the next open world and that's going to be on Venus. And it's going to be, yeah, I, like I said earlier, it's going to be around 10 times bigger than the Plains of Eidolon was, which is incredible. And they've also said that they're going to be um, upgrading the amount of content that is in it. They're going to kind of fill it out a bit, as you can see here in the Plains. Uh, there is a lot of open space that's just not that enjoyable to look at or play in. Uh, but it's still great fun. There's still a lot of things to do. There's lots of rewards to get here by doing different bounties uh, for the people in the town just over from here, where it's kind of like a community hub where you can... Uh, there's different vendors that you can buy items from or sell the stuff that you farm here too for standing for the faction that's at the town. And 
yeah, there's just so much in this game, and I really want you guys to give it a shot. If you like in-depth games with a lot of kind of complexity and variety, and allows you to play the way you want to play without restricting you in any way, Warframe is the game for you, and I hope you guys try it, and I'll see you guys again next time.